Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this in-depth painting tutorial for the tower. As you can see here, I've got a, a KV-128 Storm Surge. And in this video, uh, I've got regular painting tutorials, but on the Plus channel here, uh, I'll take on bigger projects and show you how to apply techniques to more challenging uh, models. And this, this kind of size, it is a challenge to get something painted up this way. So what we do uh, here uh, in this video, we'll take a, a big tower model uh, and then we'll apply uh, the uh, my orange grey uh, colour scheme to it. So uh, I'll take you from start to finish. I'll show you exactly how to paint uh, this model here. Uh, the three stages that I usually do in my painting tutorials: the, uh, the foundation colours, the washes, and the final highlights. We're going to cover how to do transfers as well. And then also, there's a diorama here uh, on the base uh, with some orcs that have been smashed asunder by this thing as it's advanced. I'll show you how to do a diorama uh, on a large base like this as well. So big tutorial this one. I think it's the biggest one that I've done, biggest model. Um, so stay tuned and then you can learn how to paint uh, this model or something similar uh, using this tower uh, colour scheme. Right, so I'm going to go about painting this model uh, in four parts. I'll paint them all at the same time but it's, it's physically broken down into four bits here. Uh, you've got the base here, the diorama that I've built up. We'll focus in on that when we uh, paint that. That's probably the first thing that we'll paint is get the base done. Um, and then you've got the legs here. They've been glued onto the base. You can check out the magnetizing video that I did for this model on the regular channel and you'll see how I went about um, magnetizing the whole thing. But main legs there, this is the big, a big chunk of the project. Then there is the, the main body with the weapon systems. They're all glued on and fixed in place. Then there's the spare one, this is the air bursting fragmentation projector, uh, it just locks in underneath here but I'm going to just paint that separate and then uh, get it all sprayed up and finished and then just add it on later, um, there's that and then you've got the main gun, this is the pulse driver cannon, uh, that is there, the rods are in, magnets on, uh, ready for it just to slot in its pre-drilled holes, but as I said full details about that is on the uh, the magnetizing video for the storm surge on the regular uh, channel you can see how I did that. It just means that I've got the option of it facing that across that way uh, and then sort of at ease or at an angle like that. And it will help me in the game because there's two options. You've got anchors up, anchors down. And I think well if it's anchors up and it's maneuvering then I'll have it at this and then just actually remind me the situation and then uh, I can then declare, right, I'm going to put anchors down and then during the game I'll actually take the gun out and put it down like that so that I know and the opponent knows that it's set ready to uh, fire twice in a turn with that anchors down special rules. It's got a, I, I just also just liked both ways the gun went, uh, straight across and at an angle, couldn't really choose, so oh, why not just magnetise it and you can have both options uh, available, it's not fixed. A bit tricky to do but uh, you can see more details of that in the magnetizing video. So that's the parts I'm going to paint. Uh, so I know we're going to come to the basing part, that'll be the first stage before that. Next is preparation, uh, which is a crucial part to this project. Uh, it will save you loads and loads of time uh, if you prepare the model well and properly, uh, especially to do with these sprays. We'll cover that next. So you can see from the colour scheme, gone for this, the dark grey, uh, as has been seen uh, on the uh, from the tower army in different battles. Just going to repeat that scheme, same process. Uh, the regular 
uh, how to paint towel uh, tutorial on on the uh, the regular uh, Striker School Painting 2 channel. I'm going to take the same process and then just apply it uh, to this much larger uh, project. So we obviously start with this dark grey colour, and that's achieved through using nice dark grey spray. Save loads of time just giving the whole thing a nice coat of dark grey. Now it's uh, it's acrylic gold, and uh, that's the range, it's by Montana, is the company. They sort of do aerosols for like graffiti artists. And then the name of this one is Stealth. And uh, yeah, don't know, just Stealth. There's no, yeah, there's a code there, 7070. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, they're quite easy to get a hold of in the UK. eBay usually have them. Uh, you can Google search for Montana Gold. Uh, sort of aerosol graffiti artist websites have them. Um, so it was easy for me to pick these up in the UK. I'm sure Europe won't be a problem. Overseas, you just have to look it up, try eBay again, um, and then sort of do Google search, and then you click on the shopping tab. Sometimes it will show you different stores near you that are relevant that may well stock um, this. But if you can't get a hold of this, don't panic. Um, just try and get an equivalent. It's sort of a dark grey. You can see the colour of it here. It's not a medium grey. It's not a it's not a dark dark grey, it's just sort of a in-between kind of colour um, and it doesn't, it's not, it won't matter too much if yours is slightly lighter or darker as long as, you know, it's your own personal preference and as long as you keep it uniform throughout your army, it's no problem um, now, obviously you want a matte colour or uh, to spray now other places you can find, I used to use a different spray I used to uh, go to a car sort of body repair shop they have different grey sprays. Obviously, you've got cars, you've got thousands of different colours uh, the different types of cars have. So, often that can be a good place uh, to try and pick up, uh, pick up some grey uh, spray or sprays of all, all sorts of colours. Uh, the, the company in the UK that I used to use for that was called Halfords. Uh, they sell sort of mountain bikes and, and stuff, but also they had a big rack of sprays for cars and doing your own repairs. Um, I used to use a colour called uh, Rover. Tempest Grey, it was called. It was all right. It was okay, um, but I think this uh, this uh, Montana Gold range is better. But if you can't find this exact one, just look for an equivalent. I'm sure it won't be a problem. So before I spray this on, I found that this spray uh, it, it can go on, and then when it dries, it can crack up. Like, um, like when it dries, the paint starts to separate a little bit. Not too bad, but sometimes it doesn't look too good. You get a bit of and, and not uniform as well when it goes on. So what I found is a trick. I mean, this has come out really nice here. The grey on here has gone on really well. I'm really happy with it. Um, and it just it's nice and uniform. A lovely coat has gone onto that. I've achieved that this time around by giving it not a heavy coat, but a just a general spray with Games Workshop Chaos Black. That just sprays nicely onto the plastic, um, even onto the base as well. Um, now not, not a heavy, heavy coat, I haven't done two coats, but just a, a, a decent coating of it and then let that dry thoroughly and that gives a nice base for this Montana Grey to go over the top. Now you don't want heavy, heavy coats going on top because you want to build up loads of layers of paint and you start to lose your detail. Um, so just a, a light to medium coat of that um, and then when you're spraying, you know, for this one, gloves on, tilt the thing right up spray right underneath make sure I catch all of the angles underneath there and then catch the base from all the different sides as well and that just links everything in and gives you a nice foundation so then after that's completely dry I then spray on the Montana, Go Montana Gold spray uh, that goes on and again just nice coats over the top not too thick um, for this one you don't want to spray too far away some sprays they dry in mid-air or it can do, and um, you start to clog and get a thick, uh, sort of rough coating on there. So practice with this one. It actually spraying sort of, I think now it's about sort of this kind of distance away. Not not a long way away, but sort of generally close there, and just nice controlled sprays. So practice. I always spray a bit on a spare, you know, piece of card or board, and to make sure the paint's coming out nice. Um, and then and then start to go on to the minute champ. So remember to do that. Then once all of that's uh, dry, and what you've achieved is your base has its base colour in that spray, the grey, 
the rims done for you and in the base color of the you know a lot of the work's done uh, your dark gray is in place and you've saved yourself loads and loads of time especially when you come to a big project like this um, so that's that done and then to help I found that when you put inks on top of the Montana gold it's sort of a satin kind of finish it starts to puddle uh, and it can be a nightmare. I used to battle with that with the previous, uh, the way I used to paint town. But I found uh, a simple coat, a light coat of uh, Games Workshop Purity Seal varnish over the top. You usually think of varnish you put at the end of your project, but do it here at this point. Um, and then that creates a surface for your inks and washes and paint to go on and it won't puddle if you get a nice even coating. And remember, Again, this is one that you do want to get in underneath, so tilt the model around, make sure you cover every area. Any areas that you miss, you may find that the, the ink can some will puddle. It won't look very good at all. So it's worth making sure that purity seal uh, does go on the whole model. Don't want a big, thick coating. It can go a bit misty looking if you don't get that right. So a, a, a quick coat, an even coat, covering the whole thing, and that will help seal the whole thing in and give you a nice surface to paint. That's a brilliant surface to paint on now. Um, and then all that base colours in position and the hard work's been done. So that's all good stuff. So that's your preparation. Uh, I've taken a bit more longer time on this in-depth paint tutorial because it's the foundation for the model and it's so important. And if you get it right, you save yourself lots of trouble. Um, and then uh, it could just help you get a good result uh, as the different stages go on. So that's preparation there. Uh, for this storm surge. Right then, just to talk about the base work that I've done here. Um, I don't do dioramas for, for all of the models. Um, usual rule that I follow, just for speed, I mean you can do as much or as little as you want. Um, if I'm painting like a, a regular infantryman, I don't usually put much around the base, just the usual scatter and flock, and that's usually it. If it's an HQ model, uh, of this size base, I might add a little feature on there, like a helmet or something from a you know defeated foe, uh, whatever, for that. And then, uh, if I go onto something bigger, like this, for some of these kind of bases, I'll add a few bits of accessories on there. Uh, but I sort of save time and don't do too much. But again, it's totally down to you. You can do as much work on the base as you want. When it comes to something big like this, I do like. Uh, to do sort of a diorama here, and I've done different factions before. Uh, for my um, Eldar Wraith Knight, I have sort of a tiered diorama set up, looks really nice, really happy with how that's come out. Uh, but for Tau, sort of a classic enemy that they're facing, and an army I've been working on, I have spare bits for is orcs, so I've done an orc diorama here. So, again, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but still want it to look pretty good. And it creates a nice area of interest that he's, he's marching across something he's blown up or, or conquered. Um, I did a nice Imperial Fist one um, for the Gorkonaut, you see a smashed up Rhino uh, on his base. It's worth doing, I think it adds a nice lot of interest. Especially this is going to be a focal point of your Tau army, uh, so maybe you want to add in something for people to look at. So the way this one works, quite straightforward, I separate out my plastic bits from my spare, uh, the spare bits from my Orcs, I had a spare boy here, uh, body, arms, head, and then bits from spare bits from the flyer, you can see the canister there, different bits around, like so. And then around the other side, nice spare part from the uh, orc flyer as well. Another orc boy. I then stick these uh, to the base uh, using the regular plastic glue. Don't do any sand or anything yet. And I get those all in position as much as I can, not everything can go on. Uh, but I build it up and that means before I put the sand and so on, these are fixed. Once they've given a few hours to dry, uh, they're fixed solidly in place and I can build up my gravel and so on and not disturb this, it won't fall over. Um, the, the main feature's already stuck in place. And I've put marks on here, I've gouged out bits of night with the knife. I've used cutters to tear off chunks here because it is a smashed up wreck, you want to give that impression uh, that it's been ripped apart in combat or some explosion. Um, so I've torn off bits from there. I've put bends in on some of the panels as well. So that means I was able to put this one more upright. I've cut bits of panels off and stuck them into the ground. Uh, that kind of thing. And that helps uh, to give that smashed up. You know, you can't really make out what exactly is smashed up. But that's sort of part of the idea. You don't want people to say, oh look, it's a, it's a wing from an aeroplane. 
what's that doing with warp wires? It's more of a there's pieces of something that's sort, but it's hard to make out what it is. Um, and then it helps I was tucking the legs. The legs look a bit silly when they're laying down, so I laid a panel across the top, masking anything that doesn't look quite right. And that's another way of you know just sitting and thinking about how you're going to do it. Um, stuck the arms on here, cut the pistol off so I could dig uh, or glue his fist into the panel here. And then on this side, the arms, they don't quite fit nicely in there. They look good from here, but when they were glued, they didn't look too good at all. Um, so then your next stage uh, is to start filling in with PVA glue, uh, the white glue, and then dropping in your stones and sand across here. And I did that all the way around. And then when there's any gaps, like there's a gap in between his armpit there um, and just underneath here, just where it didn't look right, just more PVA put on top of what you've already done, the sand, uh, the sand and the rocks already on there, and then just drop some more sand and rocks, and then more PVA, more sand and rocks, and you gradually build up your height around the model. You can see it being built up there. Nothing major, um, but just enough to, to lift him up and to fill in uh, any gaps and so on. And then around his legs, can't quite see it in there, but just there, that hollow, fill that in with sand and rubble. So he's been buried alive, partly. Um, that's the sort of impression I wanted to create. And then you do the rest of the base all the way around, and then leave it. It's going to take a day to dry, at least. Um, and then once that's done, uh, you're then able to do your spraying. And then the great thing about this dark grey colour scheme is the base and the body are all the same colour and you've got your foundation nicely in place there with your, your dark grey colour ready to go straight on with highlights, saves loads of time. So that's preparation for the base. Do plan to do an actual uh, how to do basing tutorial, like a separate one. Do have the Imperial Knight to do. Might do a special diorama for that and show you from start to finish how that works. But that's just a talk through of how I accomplished the base here. It, I think it should look quite nice. You've got the orange, the greys and the whites of the tower and then a nice contrast down here of the greens and the reds and the white uh, for the orcs and I think that would be a nice complement to the tower colour scheme. So hopefully it'll look quite good there. So what we'll do next uh, is we'll go on to the paints that you'll need for this project. Right, let's just run through the paints that you need. Um, so, a couple of washes to start off with, uh, Seraphim Sepia, and then Agrax Earthshade, they're quite crucial those two. Uh, then, uh, Metallics, uh, Iron Breaker, then uh, the Mithril Silver, that's the old colour, uh, the, the new colour uh, is called Rune Fang Steel. Then another metallic here, this is the Hashat Copper. Uh, the list will be in, I'll put the list in the description for you. Uh, then we have uh, Ushabti Bone. It's not too many for the tower, it's quite a good colour scheme paints wise. Uh, then we have the Administratum Grey. And then a darker grey, I've got the old Codex Grey here, but it's uh, Dawnstone is the name of the new colour. Uh, then I've got the old blazing orange, it's now called Troll Slayer Orange. That's the iconic orange colour we're using for the tower. And then uh, the old Ultramarines Blue, which is now called Alt Dorf Guard Blue. And then uh, a base colour, Ceramite uh, White. Now, that's what you need for the tower colour scheme. There's some more colours that I need to do the orc diorama, so I'm sort of bringing in some of the colours from the orc. Um, colour scheme. Now, these I'll, I'll call these out separately because you may not necessarily need them, depends on what diorama you use for the base. Uh, but the extra colours uh, that I need are uh, the Wazdaka Red, the Flash Gets Yellow, then uh, Steel Legion Drab, then uh, Evil Sun's Scarlet, uh, Abaddon Black, and then uh, Bestial Brown, that's the old colour. Uh, which is now called Mournfang Brown, and then the last one is an old Goblin Green here, uh, but the new colour is called uh, Warboss Green. So that's just extra colours you need if you bring in orcs into the diorama. But the main, the main focus, the main paint you need is just there, and that's not too bad for paints. Um, that's sort of one of the, the lesser, uh, one of the projects uh, or, or colour schemes that requires less paints. It's pretty good paints-wise uh, there. 
Right, so onto the base then. Uh, I'm going to make a start by highlighting the stones and rocks along here. Uh, so I have my uh, Codex Grate or Dawn Stone pot opened, and then usually I do the grate and then go straight into the white, even on a dirty brush, because um, the colours sort of merge together. So I've got my Ceramite White opened up as well. So uh, Dawn Stone then, take a amount of that on the brush here. I'm using just a wash brush, it's a new one, it's got a nice stiffness to it. Just take out some of the spare paint here to make sure this brush is nice and dry. Load up with paint and then just start highlighting. You do get through brushes doing uh, the highlighting the stones, it's just gradually wears away on the brush bristles but there's not much way around that. So I'm just highlighting the stones here you can it's not too noticeable from the camera angle there but just picking out it's making the lighter stones going from dark grey to light grey. I wouldn't go straight on with white it's too stark you need sort of that in between colour it is noticeable. So I'm just being careful here at the edge I don't want to get any paint onto my rim. I don't want to disturb that or have to repaint it. It's already done for me there with the dark grey and that's all I want to do to it. If you use a brush that's not strong with bristles, um, like an old brush, they can, they don't have the, they're not quite as good at reaching all of the stones. It's nice to have a stiffer, newer brush and that just gets those highlights on a lot better, it picks out more stones and gets more of the grey on that. Just working around here, not too fast if we got a little bit onto the metallic areas because we'll paint that next. So just working the brush around. If I do get any onto the rim then I just put a bit of spit onto my finger or thumb and then just rub it off quickly before it has a chance to dry. So just greying up that whole area, that's going fine, I'll just get the rest of the base done. Right, so that's the grey done, it hasn't taken too long, just gone all around the model. All of the stone areas uh, is all highlighted. Brush is still dirty, there's not much grey on there, but I just go straight into white. Here, so I take some white paint, put it onto the palette here, just to uh, take the worst of it off. And then, sort of flicking the paint over the top. Yeah, and you can see it going onto the base. Like so, it's going on well. The paint's nicely thinned. It's not watery, but it's nice thin paint. It's got a good flow to it. And then just carefully going up to the edge. And then around. It's going on very nicely indeed here. Carefully in between the toes. I'll load up some more. Nicely up to the edge, just make sure it's not gone over. And you can sort of see uh, that going nicely onto the model. There's some stones there in between the arms, just picking those out there. Once that starts to dry, if you feel it's not strong enough in any areas, then just do a second uh, a bit of white. Because the paint's quite thin, it's not a stark, like ultra strong white, it's blending in well with the grey here and if there's any areas you want to flick over just to enhance the stonework that bit more then feel free to do that and do as much or as little as you want but it's not a stark stark white, it's highlighted but it's not that white that just kills off uh, the, the greys that you've done so I'll just highlight the rest of this here and then that's that highlighting down on the base right so that's the highlighting done, you can see it's picked out the detail there on the base, all the rocks. Just gradually worked it through. You can take a little bit more white. Just pick out any areas that I want to enhance. Just like flick the corners of some of the main rock features on that. Um, but I'm just fussing now. I'm pretty happy about it. It's come out. Make sure to catch the little bits of rocks that you put on in the gaps and so on. Those in. That's looking pretty good. That's that finished off. That look even better when you start putting the washes on and so on. So now it's just the little parts that are on the diorama, these panels here. 
from the smashed up orc vehicle and then these these couple of buried orc boys as well do those next right so I've now got the iron breaker that's that medium sort of silver color I've got an old uh, base coat brush here and um, it's one that can hold a nice bit of paint bit of control to it as well um, and what I'm doing is now going to paint these metallic panels now they will be different colors you've got red and black and, and checkered and so on uh, but the base color I'm going to do those uh, is this uh, metallic so we'll pick out all of that so you've got a panel here this this orc face it's probably going to be red I'm going to fill it with silver first of all um, silver is a good foundation color for you to paint your colors on top the black and the red and the white all goes on nicely so just paint the entire thing I'm going to paint the sides all the little spikes anywhere that can be seen and just pick that out there's this panel here Make sure I get the side, and then here, and it sh the paint should go on nicely because you've sprayed with the varnish. If this wasn't varnished, the paint would bubble uh, and wouldn't look very good at all. You'd have a real battle to get it on. So it fills in there just nice. There's a canister here running along, it's a spare part from the burner bomber. Fill that in, right up to where the sand comes up. Any highlights that are flicked, grey or white paint that's flicked onto the panel, uh, can now you can go over it neatly. You don't want to go onto the stones. This is one where you want to be pretty neat with this one. It's going on well here. And round, nice neat work. If you do get a bit of silver onto the base, you're not really going to notice. This is a very similar colour. Um, just filling that out. I'm just going to go around the rest of the model now. Get that filled in. The other areas to cover will be the, like the panels that are on the old boys, like the armour plating, and then the swords and so on. Um, you can do it in the silver as well. Okay, so uh, I've just gone around here. All the panels now are filled in with this uh, iron breaker. Still, you can see that. That's just nice foundation now. I can pick out some of the different colour panels. The orc helmet I've done, uh, the uh, the armour plating, the sword. If you want more details, just check out the orc painting tutorial on the regular channel. I'll show you how to paint one of the orc boys. It's just the same process there. Uh, all around the weapon here, magazine and so on, the orc's gun is all done. And then all the panels and stuff just there, so that helps. And then remember, you're going to put washes on. Just following the same stage for the base. Uh, as we do the, the main project and that is base colours which is what we're working on at the moment and then um, after that you want to do your washes and the wash is going to really weather and make this thing nice and rusty uh, and then the final highlights just to pick out the details really finish off the base there so we're going to the uh, next colour alright so steel leverage and drab and this is for uh, the like the tunic that the orc boys are wearing so just going over it here and running onto the skin I'm going to try and make this uh, connect here, I don't want grey in between so I'm just deliberately running over onto the green and then I'll go neat with the orc skin to finish off so just running down here filling that part in there's a glove he's wearing down here so we'll fill that in like so uh, he's not wearing a glove on the other hand. There's this armband or rope he's got around his arm. Make sure that's filled in. There's a wrist uh, ropes or whatever going on around just his wrist. Been, it's quite untidy. It's going onto the skin. I'm great. I'm deliberately doing it so that I'd fill in that join between uh, the tunic and the skin with the brown. Just so it links together when I need to up with the green later on. This round to the other side, he's got some bandages or whatever just around his wrist on the other arm. Just follow it around the other side. Then he's wearing a, a tunic thing here. Now I'm going to be neat here because I'm going up to the silver on the plate. His armor plates want to be neat. That's going to be the final join just there. And then right working it down. And then onto his lower half and trousers all gets this colour. It's 
far as I can reach down with the brush. Now it sort of disappears into the darkness there, so not too fussed about that. The eye's not really going to go in there, um, and you can fill in the colour with the with the washes later. Just tucking underneath the armpit now and swinging all the way around, so I've got the whole thing like so. Around the neck again, it's going on to the green area, but that's fine. We'll need to knock the green later on. That's looking good, and then this just around his wrist like so. Making sure it's all tucked in, all the angles. And just checking anywhere else. Yeah, just on this flagpole. Boss pole just here, there's a bit of stuff wrapped around here, so that would be in that brown colour. And I think that's about it. Yeah, so that's that colour done. X is the Yashavati bone. Uh, there's a skull here on the boss pole. So I'm just going to fill in the whole thing. It's grey at the moment, that dark grey, so I'm going to fill it in with this shabti bone, that'll be our base colour. Putting the washes on. I'm not going to bother with two coats, don't think it needs it, but if you if you feel you want to make it more solid, uh, then by all means do your two coats for that. I'm just turning the base here so I catch this skull from all the angles. Filling in the eye sockets, they'll, they'll be filled in with the wash. And then his teeth here, he's got teeth showing. Going to fill in his mouth. And again, it's not too neat, it's gone over onto his lips and so on, but I'm just making sure that the teeth that are in the mouth get filled up there with that, and that's that colour done. Right, just on to uh, Wazdaka Red. And I've got a neat brush here, just a nice uh, standard brush with a good tip. Not too worried if I go onto the areas of the orc's skin, but I want to avoid the teeth. I'm just painting the gum line. Does look does make the orc face look more effective when you can get that in. So his gums are showing along the top here. I'm doing that first because I can go up to it neat with the green. And then just in between the teeth, just the opening of the mouth, I want to fill in with the red. Like so. Just trying to be as neat as I can. And that looks pretty good. There. So the washes will flow in there, and that will make that look good. Right, so War Boss Green. This is where the orc really comes to life here, doing his skin colours. See this arm? Just going neat now up to the tunic colour, filling in all the muscle areas. And again, this grey colour, once it's varnished, is a good platform for your colours to go on. See the arms? Good that. Then neatly up to the stuff that's wrapped around his wrist. And then this hand isn't a glove, so it goes straight on. And this one I want to be neat. Oh, I'll do this one right. Just turn the model around, getting the fingers, filling in all the gaps between the fingers. So the wash will fill that in nicely. So, and then onto the other side, just paint there, but I'll just fill in all the orc skin and uh, gets a coat of that war boss green. Right, so that's the green done, uh, so you can, he's really looking like an orc boy now. Uh, I did have to pick out just a little bit of the teeth under here, I could see his, you can see his mouth just underneath, um, and then this one's finished as well. So that's pretty much the orc boys done. So we're going to pick out a few of the colours on the uh, panels now. That's uh, so all the red and black uh, for the orcs. So I think I'm going to go for a bit of red on this sword, just along the length of the blade, uh, but not the cutting edge. So up to there, and then we'll chip that up. That should look quite cool. I'm also going to go for, I mean it's tempting to try and do checkered, but I mean it's a very awkward angle to do that. Don't want to spend hours and hours and just to, really it's just the base at the end of the day. So I'm going to fill this bit in with some red. Red look great when all the washes are on and the chipping and so on. Now this is a burnt out wreck, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of water to my paint. I'm going to do strong areas of red and then sort of washed out areas. 
so it's not a uniform solid it's sort of strong and then weak in areas like so you know it's not perfectly done remember this has been on fire it's burnt it's smashed up so you're going to get uh, a, a variety in strength to the color so I'm just doing it there we'll do the same I was going to leave this one but I'm going to put red on here just to balance the thing out so I'm going to run some red along here but then weakening it around where these are there's some scrape marks along here I want to leave the red out of that and then we'll put some more stronger red here and then here just leaving the ridges uh, the metallic colour so you can see just a variety to the strength of the red there and then I'm going to work it in here that's looking pretty good yeah pretty happy with how that's coming out I'm not going to do the edge here or the underside just there where you can see, you see a nice bit of colour and that was all chipped up and washed, that should, should look pretty good just look around to see if there's anywhere else I'm going to do red no, so the next colour uh, is, I'm going to get the black done again, same principles as the red, just choose areas you want done in black um, I'm going to do this disc panel on his back we'll do that in black like so just the surface of it, the edge here, I'm leaving and you can see the silver there so uh, you're leaving that, that's why you're painting the silver first all the way around and then you just pick out the panel uh, his helmet as well here I want to do in black so we'll pick that out and again silver's a nice base colour to put the black straight on top going carefully around the horn that's coming out the side of his helmet around And just down here. That's looking good. Okay, so that's that done. On there. So that's it. I've put the black on. You see, I've done his helmet there, and then at the top of his helmet, I've done also filled in this panel here just to bring in a bit of black onto this side of the diorama. Uh, red here on this uh, orc face, and then this. Um, there's some areas you can leave silver, I mean this whole canister I'm just going to leave uh, just the metallic colour, it'll look nice when it's all rusted up just a couple of other tiny bits the horns here on his helmet I'm going to pick those out with the Yoshabti bone so, one and then two, the other one's just tucked away then I have the Hashak copper I've just seen uh, the gun that the orc's carrying here uh, the magazine the bullets that are inside the magazine there should be the Shabti bone colour so I can just fill that in uh, with a bit of a Shabti bone that will go a different colour when that's rusted up with the washes and then the last colour is the white ceramite white and again it's a nice thin down colour and I'm going to use that for the sort of teeth here on this boss pole so just fill that in there, there and there, that picks that out nice now as you got your red, white, black nice combination there for orcs um, that's the only white I'm going to do uh, and then you can do a second coat, remember this is going to be dirtied and, and ink washed so it's going to look grubbier than usual so I'll just leave that like that, but that's it base colours are on, nice colours you've introduced to the base there and then we're going to link the whole thing, tone the whole thing down uh, with these nice washes next Right, so there's an ink as a wash that I forgot to remember, um, and that's a Phonian camo shade. It's like a brown and then a green. It's perfect for shading the orc flesh. So I'm going to put that on first, and that's obviously to do the orc skin um, here. Now you could go over the washes, the serif, and, and so on. You could do that, but I, I do want to keep this skin uh, the same as I usually paint for orcs. Like they've freshly been killed. It's just been blown up, and these orc boys are lying in the rack here, so I'm filling in the wash on there, you can see it uh, the face, and it's brown enough for you to do in between uh, in the mouth and to fill that in, that's no problem um, so I'm just filling that in there a, a, a good coat of this uh, will be good, you want a thin coat on it to flood into the gaps quite nicely 
just there. I'm just going to spin this old boy around and tuck this wash in under his chin. Make sure he's all covered and the fingers just wrap him around just there. But that's looking good. And then uh, we'll paint the old boy here. I'm not going to go over onto the brown uh, bandaging and so on. That's going to be done with the seraphim sepia a bit later on. But make sure all this old skin is covered. It's a brown, it's got a it's brown green tinge to it, it's just nice. Green wash is too, uh, too stark of a colour. This one's a nice toned down shade. Just filling in the face there and the hand wrapping around the sword. Make sure it's all flooding nicely in between the fingers. And then all the way around linking up just there. Any areas you miss you can do with the seraphim sepia, it doesn't really matter. And then just on working on the arm here, swinging around to get behind. There, there. Okay, so that's your first wash going on. Whilst that's wet, it doesn't really matter, you can put the seraphim sepia on uh, straight after. It doesn't matter if, it, if the wash is sort of flowing to each other a little bit. It's not too much of a problem. Yeah, it's so the seraphim sepia next. Uh, now, you're using this on all of all of the wreck, all of the area that hasn't been shaded, the, you know, anything other than the York skin, uh, and then also the ground as well. Just give you an example, I'm using a wash brush here, uh, so loading up the brush and then it's a good idea to tuck it into where the model meets the base and then just working it into there, it seals it in nicely there uh, with a colour color other than the greys and just flooding it into there and all the way around and then I sort of go round rocks, bigger rocks and then I just do patches, random patches on the base and that gives me that sort of finish. Then coming around, really where the wreck and so on is, I really emphasise this colour nicely. Flood it onto the uh, metal here, filling in all of the gaps and panels and then now we can really start to rust up these uh, orc, this orc debris here and then flooding it in all around here and the feet, you can see that. Looking good, spin him around. And flood it in here. Make sure I catch all around his feet. Working it right into the recesses here. It's a good way of just shading these areas. Like so, all around the base where the stabilizer is anchoring onto the ground. And then all the rocks that are built up here. Yeah, I link the whole thing in nicely because I can flow straight onto the uh, tunic colours and so on. There, all of the metallic areas will get a coat of this. It's a lovely way of linking the whole thing together. I tuck it under his arm onto the metallic panels just to rust them up nicely. So I'll just go around the whole, you can see it there, flooding on quite nicely. And I'm just going to do that around the whole of the uh, diorama here. But it, uh, just remember though, just patches around these areas. You want some areas that are just left grey, um, just sort of broken up with the brown wash. Right, so that's the wash uh, on there. Just finishing off the last bit here. Make sure it's all filled in, but just working that brown uh, wash into where, wherever the model, the main model, contacts the base. Uh, and then especially in amongst all of your uh, diorama there, and it just tones the whole thing down. It's the starkness of those colours sort of taken away, and it sort of blends everything together, and that's looking really good. There's still another wash to go on top of this, so we'll have to let it all dry, uh, and then we'll put the final wash, and after that we can pick out the highlights. But uh, looking good here, the base is looking quite lively. Just adds another area of interest uh, to the model. Right, so once the washes are dry there uh, across the model, I then darken uh, the metal work. The basing's pretty much done. Uh, but the metal work here especially, I give a coat of the Agrax Earth Shade, and that just knocks it down another level, just emphasises the detailed areas, darkens around where this uh, wreck has taken place. So this whole canister, I'm going to give a coat of this one. Takes the brightness away and really knocks it down a few, a few levels. Don't it stand out too brightly. You do want the emphasis to be on uh, the miniature and then the base just to subtle, subtly uh, complement uh, the actual miniature itself. I'm just doing a little bit, not all of the tunic, but just sort of the, sort of the details of the tunic there. 
I uh, might fill in the mouth here on him just to make that a bit stronger and the whole blade here the sword I might put a bit round where he's meeting the ground and the rubble just to strengthen that any area that you want strengthened then this panel gets a coat of this see it's a double layer you're creating the rusty look with the seraphim sepia and then you're emphasizing it creating more depth and picking out the detail uh, with this Agrax Earthshade wash and then just spinning them round and then just tucking the brush in to all the cracks here yeah there should be an area that's darkened down so you want to pick up all that there and then this gun this orc shooter that he's holding just there and just go over it's mostly the panels and accessories that get uh, a coat of this wash. Right, it's just finished the wash there, you can see it's gone on and you see the way see the way the washes have linked all the colours together and then sort of half blended it into the surrounding rubble area as well. So stark colours are sort of all nicely toned down now. That's looking really good. So really happy with how this has come out. What I'm going to do now is just let these washes dry. Just removing any uh, puddles here that are forming. Just with a, using the brush to soak it up, that's good. So uh, we'll let this one dry. Once it's completely dry, you can then start uh, building up and doing your highlights uh, on this base. Right, so uh, what we do now is we're going to start the base colours. Um, that base is drying there, the inks are going off. Um, and it's just good to get that part done. And then the washes are done. That can stay like that. Usually uh, when I paint a project this size, I leave the highlighting um, till later on for the base. I know that most of the base work's done. I'm happy with how it's turned out, and then I can just finish it off later on. So what we do now is go on to the main part uh, of the project here. So usually the first colour I do uh, for Tau is the is the blue that I use for any of the like the gems, the electronic sort of parts. There's not much to this colour, you're just picking out a few details. Um, so I've got the Ultramarines blue, the old colour, it's Ult Dolph Guard blue as it's called now. It's the colour you use to paint your Ultramarines. It's a nice deep blue that I use as a foundation. So the rule is uh, any sort of electrical kind of uh, parts or plasmary parts see here um, I've done a base colour of that blue, I start it off with that blue here for the end of these plasma rifles and then any sort of like tubing or cables that connect it together you can see it on the back here of this um, broadside and then any uh, of the uh, gem crystal sort of vision uh, crystal type things here as well. See there isn't too much to it but it's a nice little colour to add to this um, so I can see one just here on him. I want to be neat here I can see a, a fair sized one I'm just keeping water with this paint to keep it flowing it's a nice pigment to this blue. Uh, this one here definitely like so, so you can see I'm picking out the blue. It's not much to this one, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, in here. And in here. Yeah, then here. Anything that looks like it's sensors. Here, here, here. And then this one. There's quite a few on this. On here. But you can you can choose. You don't have to do the ones that I'm doing. Uh, there's one to mirror just across the other side here. Just picking them out. Uh, I'll pick out some more of these uh, here, and you can do all the parts of the model uh, just to get that one. Done. It shouldn't take too long. Yep. So I've finished here. It hasn't taken too long. Um, sort of the general rule that I'm working to. Anything that's facing forward, it's like any weapon system. Usually they're going to have uh, one of these circles over there. That's going to it's going to be you know, uh, range finding and so on and calculating stuff. So you'll see in these little circles dotted about. It's your choice at the end of the day. You don't have to follow mine exactly. Um, obviously the eye uh, here on the the head there as well. Some of the control panels I've done inside. It's quite hard to see, but the main control sort of computer screen for the driver there or commander. Um, some of the circular modules there I've done blue. So they're going to be sort of crystal type finish um, for them. So it's these things, range finding, any weapon system type stuff, there's a lot around this central part 
uh, of the model. Then here on the main gun, the Pulse Driver Cannon, uh, they're here in the range finding uh, sighting equipment just there. And again, the air bursting frag fragmentation projector. There's a few there as well to do. And then for the uh, for this lower torso here, there's none. There's no sighting equipment here. Uh, but it's up to you. I mean, if you want to paint some the blue, if you want more blue uh, into this, then by all means go ahead and do that. Uh, it's your choice. Right, so the next colour after the blue uh, is the Hashak Copper. And I just put that on... Uh, some of the area again you don't want to do too much of this one uh, but anywhere you think might be metallic instead of the solid grey then give it a coat of this and again it's pretty handy you've got this grey base coat here because the paint goes on pretty well I'm just painting this thing at the end you, you don't have to follow me exactly you just paint whatever you want but any, anything that you think would be metallic it's sort of a, a coppery colour, it's not a standard steel, so it's an alien kind of feel to it. Just making sure I get all the way around. Tucked in. Like so. You can do a second coat if you want. Um, but you're going to be putting washes on this and then highlights after that, so there'll still be layers to build up. That's going on well. I reckon the very end of this gun as well, this panel here, just the very tip. I'm going to do that in that colour. As I said, you're free to choose, you don't have to copy me, you can paint whichever bits you want in this. The key, I think, is not to go over the top, not to paint too much. You don't want this to become the dominant colour, um, but it's just sort of a complementary one. Just run that down the other side. Um, you're sort of, when I show you um, where I've covered the whole miniature, it's sort of I don't know, nodes and nodules and buttons, uh, those kind of things, this kind of stuff I paint in that. Just things, details to pick out in that colour. Um, and then that's that Hashat Copper. It's a nice, it complements the tower, I think it goes well with this grey colour scheme. It's nice match up with the grey, I think it's better than silver. And uh, it's that alien kind of feel to it. But I'm going to carry on here with the gun. Um, and then just coat the rest of the, or pick out the colours on the rest of the uh, model, and then you'll see where I've been with this hash up copper. Right, so that's the bronze done. Uh, you can see it's not too much, just sort of picked out um, little nodes and nodules here. The main panelling I leave, and then just pick out the little details there, so you can see it coming around. Some of the end buttons and, and panels and bits and so on around there uh, inside the uh, cockpit part this whole engine bit I've painted this colour um, and then a lot of the exhausts and ends of rockets and so on like the um, smart missile system the ends of those I've done um, as I said there's no hard and fast rule you make your own decisions where you want it to go but that's just the general uh, general idea of how I've done it like so not as much on, on here um, but there's more on, say, the gun, for example, here. Larger larger areas I've been able to use this colour. Some of the piping, not all of it, but some of the piping here for the main gun. This reactor part here as well. These ends, the ends here. Well, and then the end of the uh, gun just there. And that's the uh, air bursting fragmentation projector. A fair bit of that, actually. What the ammo canisters here have done barrels and all the little nodules and bits there as well picked out and then for the legs as well there's some areas see these this like those kind of things I picked out the uh, ribbed sort of gap or ribbed bit here on the joints I've done and then you can see the bits there that I've done in the bronze as well these stabilizers as well coming down and you can see in between the legs there as well. So that just gives you an idea of what you can do. It's sort of general, I mean, you can see a pattern emerging here. Let's see these kind of shapes. You see circles of a cut in the center. Wherever they are, wherever they are I always do them um, in the bronze color. And then anything sort of similar. So you make, you're leaving out main panels and then you're just picking out sort of the other uh, robotic sort of 
bits there. So that's the bronze. What I'm going to do next is the orange, but to do the orange, you're going to have to do a base colour first, just to give the orange a bit of strength. The pigment for the orange is not strong enough um, to to show up well on this dark uh, grey. So what you need to do is put a base colour down, and then we'll put the orange on top. Right. So for the orange, I added. It's one of the. It's like a a, a, cut, a very strong colour. Um, so it's one that the eye is going to be drawn to. It's just an example here on a broadside. So the rule I use for the orange, it goes well with white. The orange and white looks nice, and then I put it, I paint it on sort of the key areas, uh, which is the areas I want to emphasize. Usually the gun, because Tao got big guns, you want people to see they got big guns, so I've, what I've done is I've painted the end of this one, uh, orange and white, and your eyes drawn to it, and it's like, oh yeah, he's carrying a big gun. And then also areas like the head, um, and then uh, the upper torso, shoulder pads is where I want the emphasis. So you've got broad shoulders, strength up here, the head, and then the gun. And then that helps lift that away. And then sort of the darker grey panelling just sort of fades back into uh, the distance to some degree. And that helps. It means, because I mean, for Tao, what put me off painting Tao years ago was the fact that I, I thought I had to paint every single panel on the model. But for this technique, it's where the majority, 80% of the panelling is left. You're just going to chip it up later on. Um, and it saves so much time. But what you're doing by picking out some key areas is you're creating the impression you've painted loads of details. But in fact, you've actually just painted uh, just a small, a lot smaller percentage of the model. But I still think it looks pretty good. And the emphasis is there. Emphasis on the gun. And the rule is the shoulders, uh, shoulder pads, head, sort of chest area. And then uh, that's where the eye is drawn to. So that same principle uh, I'll use uh, on this storm surge. Just another quick example. Done the same thing here uh, on the riptide. So you see the gun. Emphasis there. It's carrying a huge gun. And then I run the grey and other colours down, but the emphasis, especially the main colours, which is the or or the brighter colours, the orange and the white, they get more and more emphasised around the head and shoulder areas, and they fade out to become less and less. There's no white down here. Um, a little bit of orange, but it's, it's the main areas of the central part here, the focal point of the model, which is into here. And then also I want to draw a bit of attention to the big gun that he's carrying. So that's sort of the rule. And then we'll sort of look in. There's no... Again, you choose where you want the colours to go, but that's sort of the rule that I follow. Uh, and then we'll apply that to this storm surge. Right, so what I've got here is a shabti bone. And I'm thinking maybe I'll go for a, a white panel here. And then, to get close to it, orange, I'm going to put orange on this larger panel uh, running along here. And I may do this one as well. Um, so I'm just going to paint this on. Just up to the edges, really being nice and neat. And then, you're looking to do two coats. You may need a third, but two coats uh, to make it nice and solid. You want a nice solid colour um, for the orange to go on to. There's these ridges running along the top. Not sure what I'm going to do with those. May do them white, but we're just going to paint right up to them. Here, yeah, the orange. Now I'm going to roll it around. Obviously, I'll paint the same uh, on the other side. And then just rolling around here. Like so. I'm using an old standard brush here, so it's got a nice fair bit of size to it because these panels are quite big. And again, there's no rule. Um, I, I'm following a rule here of keeping the colours, the emphasis of the colours around the shoulders and head and weapon, or end of the weapon, not not the whole complexity of the weapon here, but sort of down this end. Um, and then uh, that's the rule that you can follow, but you choose whatever panels you wish. I may do this panel here orange. Usually I think about it and try and uh, balance it and, and get it right. I may change colours or where I'm putting colours around, you know, think about it, stand back, look at it, that looks cool, and then I can decide to keep it, or I might change things around. Um, so you may see me change colours here, but what I'll do is I'll paint the areas that I think will come out orange eventually. We'll get them done, this shabti bone, and I'll do two coats to make it nice uh, and solid looking. Alright, so uh, I've done the shabti bone here. I've just sort of lined up the model. Sometimes it's a good idea just to construct, up, to put the thing together, and then that will give you an idea. Um, of how the whole model looks, because eventually the whole thing is going to be put together. You want it to look good as a whole. Um, 
So that's how it looks. I'm pretty happy that it's come out. Again, as I said, I might change my uh, my mind about where I'm putting the orange here. Uh, not too much, I think, is the key of the orange. If you do too much orange, uh, it can look over the top and you can spoil uh, that effect. It's just a complementary colour um, and just on a few areas. Not too much is needed. It's very vivid, very strong. So you sort of keep that colour quite limited. If you overdo it, that the whole model starts to become orange. It doesn't look very good at all. It's just a small amount of that. I think the main panel colour will be that grey. Um, then white and orange in sort of a similar um, proportion. So with the orange I've done none here on the air bursting fragmentation projector, it's not a focal point. Uh, just a little bit uh, here on this panel and that's it because it's a minimal area here for orange. I want it to be up near the shoulders and head and the main gun. Uh, the main gun, this large panel here, I've done. Not sure what I'm going to do with these ridges here. May keep them orange or may bring in another colour. And then uh, just this little ridge here underneath, just to balance it out, just add a little bit of orange here um, to this. I thought about putting orange down here, but I don't want to go too over the top with it, just that one big panel I think will be enough for that. Because uh, remember we've got the white and the grey to put on. And then here with the main body, you can see the, the, the strength of the orange here in the centre and around the top here, so there. I'm just trying to plan out as I was painting this planning, where's the white, where's the grey going to go just to balance it all out? I think that's sort of the um, combination I'm going to go for. A little bit of orange there just on top of the helmet, but that's mostly going to be white. But just a little bit to bring some orange up to the top. And then none around the sides, just sort of keeping it in that focal area there. So the next colour we're going to do uh, is the white. We'll put white on. Um, and I'm not too worried about doing it too strong. Um, just one coat will do because it's going to get a wash over the top and then you're going to repaint the white later on. So just one coat of white uh, in uh, the, the, some different areas on this model. We'll do that next. Right, so I've got my ceramite white here. And again, just using a standard brush. I want to do a neat job of this one. I think this big panel, this big block here at the front, I'm going to do white. And so I'm going to put it on here. Now where the Shabti bone comes in, going to paint a neat line there like so and that's why I've overlapped you can see the shabti bones just gone onto that panel there just so I can bring the white just over the top so it's a nice join I don't want a, don't want a grey line in between I want the two colours to uh, just match up just perfectly there and then just up to here this, any towel symbol, sept symbols like this, I do in the white also. And you're able just to hover the brush over the top really because it's picked out there in 3D. Um, so I just skim the brush over the top. And then the recess is left, the dark grey colour. So. I said one coat will do, it looks quite ghosty, you know, it's not perfect, but it doesn't matter because it's going to get washes over the top anyway, and then repaint it later on. But it's just to clearly mark out where the white will be, and then I'm going to run it to here, and then neatly along here, like so. I'm just filling the panel, and then it's just going to stop. Just that, like that, and I'll carry on that round, and I'll pick out some other areas as well. So I'm going to carry on painting this, and then I'll show you where I've been with the white. Right, so white's done. Uh, I haven't put any round here uh, on this because that is the uh, the lower part that I want the area of interest to be there. Um, but I have put it on the uh, tip of the gun here, just modelling or sort of copying the same concept as. Uh, the XV88, see the, the tip of the gun, focal point, um, you know, where the projector actually comes out. That's where I want the focus to be. So we're going to do white around there. It should look quite nice combined with the orange and then the grey coming through on that one. Then uh, the towel symbol here, I've gone over in white. And then most of the focus is on the main body here. So right at the top here, I've done in white here, one of these, uh, the two heads. Uh, the vision panel just right in the middle of the uh, the head there, I'll probably do that grey so I get a fine brush and go in there. Uh, the tips of the missiles, 
Uh, just again, similar following the similar pattern here. See the tip of the missile on this. Uh, I sort of want to replicate that. Definitely want the opponent's eye drawn. Well, the person, anyone who's looking at it, want the eye drawn to the fact that it's carrying some missiles that can go up to strength D there. Um, and then just look, see the focus is drawing you in um, to the, the head and the upper body part there. And it's just focusing in. Now, the tips of the missiles, I'll do white. Um, but I've found in painting them, it's not usually worth doing the white at the moment because I'm going to paint grey, put washes to go on, and then I'll pick out the missiles individually um, towards the end. So there will be more white, there'll be clusters of missiles here and also the smart missile systems as well um, I'll be picking those out also so that's uh, the white done again it's sort of a, maybe a little bit more than the orange uh, but not loads but it's, again it's your choice you can do as much or as little as you want uh, but now is one of the the main the main panel color and that's the gray um, and for that gray uh, we use the administratum gray it's sort of a medium light sort of gray color so we'll do that one next so just on the main body here, I find it works really well on the big missile uh, panels. So I'll do one of these. Again, because I haven't had to be worried about being neat with the white here for the missile tips, I can just put the paint straight on. And the grey is going all over them, which is great. That gives me, a, it lightens it up, so it'll make it easier for the white to go on there later for the tips of those missiles. Uh, but it just brings... That brings that bank of missiles out now, really highlights them. I'm going to do the tip or the crest of this thing going around, but not the, the inside panelling. And just filling this in here. Make sure I get all the way around. Yeah, it's definitely easier, saving time just to pick the missiles out later on with the white. And coming around to there. So. And when you turn on its side, you should see a panel, a line, where you can go up to. Edge, edge it just there. Like so. And then around the top. And then here. It's all marked out nicely. I can see where I can go up to. Just to there. That's perfect. Now run that all the way around. To there. And then down the inside here. I can reach. Hardly see, but it's tucked in there nicely. So that's that one done, looking good. And that, that widens out a bit as well, putting the lighter colour there. Uh, do the same for the smart missile system at the back. So this panel's going to be grey. Like so. And then, yeah, there's a nice edge for me to paint up to here as well. Like that. Side and then underneath as neat as possible, just like that. Okay, uh, there's other areas to do this panels. I'm definitely going to do this central panel grey. So I'm linking up the triple colour all the way down the middle of this. Grey is a nice colour to do. I'm just working into the edge like so, neatly around there, and just tucked underneath. And filling that in. So I'll carry on here and then uh, I'll show you where I've been uh, with the grey. Right, so the grey's finished now. I've gone around the model and as I said, it's mainly the predominant colour uh, for the panel work. So uh, quite strong around the centre here and across these rocket clusters as well. And then sort of the non important areas like the back here, there's some but there's not loads. I've done a few of the panels here and here, this bit around the edge. And then just noticed that I've missed a bit of the back. This bit needs to be done. This whole top section I've done. Uh, the bit around his neck there. The inside of the, the visor bit here and on this one. And then the panel coming down. Uh, so his skin here, this one's a bareheaded sort of tower uh, commander here. So you can see his skin. I've just painted in that grey and then we're going to add in a bit of blue ink um, just to make that sort of that tower kind of look. Uh, Grey on top of the helmet here, a little bit on the shoulder pads. You pick and choose wherever you want. Uh, this bit I've done grey around the smart missile systems. Uh, this bit here, here, and then around the uh, missiles there as well. These bits I've done. 
some of the panels here, not all, but just a few of those. And that's about it for that one. And then for the lower part of the legs, you've got the central part here I've done in the grey. Some of the panels here, not all of them, maybe just under half. Uh, this larger piece of left, the darker grey, all the leg parts here. See how much you time you save by not putting loads of work into these bits because it's not so important. They'll look nice when they're chipped up, just nothing around here at all. A little bit at the back. And that is about it. It's just, you know, this whole half of the model is, is not too much effort, which again saves loads of time. Imagine if you're painting all these panels and intricately in here, it'd take you forever. A uh, little bit here on this air bursting fragmentation project, just a bit there, a bit on the end, and then a bit central uh, there on sort of the range finding sighting equipment for that. And then the main gun, maybe your orange is going to be here, the white, and then some grey. There's uh, again the sighting equipment, and then some of this one, uh, these bits here I've done in the grey, just there, and then I've repeated it symmetrical on either side. Uh, these bits I've left, this I've left, I'll just chip that up, it should look fine. So that just gives you an idea, so the, the emphasis is towards the front of the gun, especially the end, that's where the, you've got the eye drawn to the sides of the barrel, um, and you know, that's where the projectile's going to come out. So uh, that just gives you an idea, see if I can stack him up, here are his magnets, that goes on like that, and then we have the gun, it's, it's good to sort of stand back and see uh, you know how it's going to come out. I think it looks pretty good. Pretty happy about that's come out. If you change your mind, you know when you stand back and look at it, you say, "Oh, I'm not so sure, not so sure about here or here." Then just you can mix up some grey, add keep adding black to it till it matches the original colour, and you can get away with um, going over uh, any mistakes. Or if you change your mind about where you want the different colours to go, but generally happy with that. So that's that done. Uh, the next colour is the orange. We're going to fill out the cream areas, and we're going to put that orange colour on top. So, we're going to do one of these panels here in the orange, and you notice it should go on pretty good because uh, you've got that nice strong uh, cream colour underneath. So, yeah, and this one's, I thinned this one down a fair bit, so I may do two coats just painting along, and then this line where it meets the white, I do want to get it just nice. So, just run along the brush. Yeah, and happy with how that's come out. That's gone on nicely. And I can just wash that, put the uh, washes in between, and that should look good. But it really helps having that cream on there and having it two coats, a nice strong coat, um, and that makes the orange go on just nice. You'd, you'd really struggle to put this on directly onto the grey, uh, pigment-wise. Uh, it's not too strong, so it just helps to get a nice solid colour. And when you put loads and loads of layers on, you're going to get it's going to look cloggy and thick and horrible, so it just means you can do thinner coats and they come out looking very nice and smooth. Just run this now underneath the panel. This is where you want to get it nice and neat up against the white. Yeah, really happy with how that's come out. You see the orange and the white, they complement each other really nice. Um, and that's really... look at the injection of colour. That's why I went for this orange colour, just I had the grey colour scheme, it was okay. And I'll try thinking of a colour. Uh, that would look nice, um, and then this bright orange. It's sort of lacking. Like it didn't have any arm, other armies were using the orange, so that's the colour I went for. Um, but you could easily swap that out. You can choose any colour that you want. Uh, if you want to follow this colour scheme along, but you say I'm not keen on the orange, you can then change, swap it out for some other spot colour uh, of your choice. But what I do now uh, is fill out the rest of these cream areas with this orange, and then we'll see how the model looks. Right, so orange is done. Here, uh, I've just gone round. Uh, the cream colour here. Now, uh, it's, you can see what I mean here about not doing too much. So if orange is all over this, it would sort of be confusing to look at. So you're just shifting the eye and putting the emphasis on the end of the gun. And what I've done is, I have changed my mind, what I've done is I've put white uh, ridge across there. I just think it looks quite cool with that white ridge. So I've decided to do that. I've just put that in over the top and that's gone nicely over the top of the orange uh, that I had painted. Just to add an area of interest, just to sort of show off the length of this gun, just try and enhance the features of this uh, model, and then I think it's come out really well. I'm really happy with how the orange has turned out on there. I've kept it sort of central. Uh, there's not too much of it. There's none out here at all. Because your eyes aren't being thrown about all over the place. It's sort of you're zoning in on the centre of the model, just a little bit on top of the helmet, 
uh, just there just to balance it out and then just you have just the little bit of orange just there uh, on the lower torso right just a quick correction here what I'm going to do uh, is I'm painting the skin here uh, on this, this bareheaded towel commander and it's just white mixed with a bit of the outdoor blue just to give that a blue tinge to the white there I'll just put going over the skin there and then a wash is going to go over the top of this as well put a blue wash over the top and that'll give a nice effect for his skin if there's no if you don't have a Benny bareheaded tan don't worry about it but that's the sort of color we're looking at you can see a tinge of blue to it that's just nice and I'll put a wash over that and then highlight it again later that should look fine so with that done we're ready for washes now I think the base coats are done and we're ready to go on to the wash stage Right, so what we're going to do next uh, is the wash washes. And the great thing about this technique is you're going to take one wash, and that's the Agrax Earth Shade, and then I'm just going to apply it to the entire model. Um, just apart from that towel, uh, bare head just there, we'll use a blue wash for that. But you just cover the entire thing. Uh, it's going to tone down the grey, the orange, uh, the metal work, and the dark grey colour as well. All linked together and toned in just with one wash. So you're saving loads of time, and it'll just give it a really nice weathered, shaded effect. It'll take away from that, the starkness of these colours. You're going to bring in a brown. You're going to sort of, because I wanted these towels to look sort of campaign, sort of seasoned. They're going to have chips and uh, sort of rust marks on them, and so on. And this is part of the stage of doing that. So, Agrax Earth Shade, and then the dark grey areas. This should go on nicely because you've given it that coat. Remember talking about preparation earlier on. You've given it that coat uh, of the matte varnish, the purity games extra purity seal. That means that this wash flows on nicely. If you hadn't done this, it would start to puddle. And it would look terrible. So if there's any areas here that haven't been covered, you'll see that start to puddle here. But just using the brush, I've got a wash brush here appropriate for what we're doing. And just making sure, using the point of the brush to make sure it goes into all of the cracks here. Working it in and then using the brush to mop up any puddles here. Just want a nice even spread here that's going on nicely. Now when you come to... Uh, the grey I just go over the whole thing. When you come to the orange, I'm going to try and be neat around the orange. If I put this on, I'm going to have to put layers of orange paint to correct it. So I just want to put the wash around the areas I want to shade. And then not worry about the solid panels. And then same for the white as well. I don't want to interrupt the white. There's no point. It's not going to accomplish anything. I just want to fill in the areas where it needs to be done, where the shading needs to go. This disc, for example around here but being careful not to flood all over the the white we'll leave that and then just gap in between if you go over a little bit you can use your finger just to wipe it off it's just going to save you work a bit later on when you come to redo the orange I'm going to fill in these holes here these need to be shaded like so and these holes here and then I'm going to use my finger just to take away the spare wash I don't need it's nice and neatly done and then I can just do a thin layer of orange over the top and that saves a lot of work to restore the strength of the orange there. Uh, I'm going to shade this. It should shade just nicely. And around. Yeah, looks good. And then these white bars, just that where it meets the orange. I'm going to fill that in with the brown wash here as well. That's looking really good. Great. Can you see any bits? Here, here and here. Like so. And then we'll do a bit more of this. Great. I'm just filling that in. And the white where it joins, just the joins in the white. Again where the white joins the metallic colour. Go around this bit. So, this is looking really good. So, um, I'll carry on here. I'm just going to do, carry on the wash. You follow the same principles that I've taught there. Sort of avoid the orange, let that stay solid, and the white as much as you can. Uh, be neat around those, and then just fill in the rest and do it evenly to make sure you cover all of the uh, area, mopping up as you go along. Not a good coat, uh, and then that should shade that. And that's looking really, really nice. Yeah, that's fine. So, uh, we'll carry on. And we carry on doing the shading here across the rest of the model. 
Right, so the ink's dried now. Um, I've gone around the whole of the model. Uh, you can see here it's just shaded everything in nicely on there. Uh, and then just on the other parts, the body's come out where it's, well, it's really helped to fill in all the details there. You can see the, uh, the, the colours and the edges and, the, and so on. It's all, it's all stronger looking once that wash goes on top. So what we're going to do now, um, I've done it on the lower half as well, this is all done. So what you're going to do now is to, uh, the wash stage is finished, um, you, just that little bit of blue to put on, I'll do that in a minute, just onto the uh, the head of that towel commander there. Um, but then the next stage is to do your highlights to bring out uh, the colours and really for this towel colour scheme you're bringing out uh, the orange, the white and the grey, restoring them back again, highlighting the uh, metallics as well, um, just to bring up that and make it make it look a whole lot better. So a good, good way through the project now. Um, so I'm gonna do, I've got the orange out here, just the same colour, blazing orange or troll slayer orange as it's called now. And it should be that your orange isn't too uh, disturbed because you've been neat and not let too much of the wash go onto it. So you're just strengthening that colour. One thin coat should strengthen it okay. Just using the brush strokes to make it nice and even. Just going to tuck the brush around underneath. That looks good. Like so. And I'm just going to do a little bit more. Now if you have got an area where, see here the ink's gone over the top, I'm just going to put a slightly thicker layer on. I could build up loads and loads of layers, but I, I find that if you just dab on a slightly thicker amount, keep it nice and even and neat, and that's enough to cover that up. Gonna run along here. That looks so good. And then I'm just gonna tuck on, I'm just gonna blob on a little bit of orange here. Just to cover up this piece. This bit of uh, brown that's got on. That looks fine. See the strength of that orange coming out? That just makes it nice and solid. You are actually gonna then put chipping on there, a little bit of weathering, um, but just to make that panel. Nice and solid looking. I'm going to carry on now. So all the all the orange everywhere. I'm just going to neaten it up, uh, do a coat over the top, and then that will get that bit done. Right, so done all the orange here. You can see the colours come out nice and strong, nice and uniform. That's ready for the chipping and so on later on. Uh, so next colour you can do, uh, we'll maybe do the white here. Uh, one part of the white we won't do, and that's these missile, uh, the tips of these missiles here, and on the smart missile system. Um, that's sort of the finishing touch I like to do because you've got to paint in between here the grey first. So I'll paint the white, but we're going to leave those as sort of something we do right at the very end. But we'll go on to white next. Now for white, you've got this one layer that's gone on, um, but it's it's quite ghosty. Probably going to do a second and then probably a third layer. So we're going to paint on here, and it's just to neaten up uh, and to fill out. So you're filling out the colour and then you're neatening up. As well, this is your final chance to get it nice and neat. Yeah, so see, I'm just going around here. It's got a standard brush I'm using because it's quite a large panel. I get the the paint on that and run as neat as I can along these lines, as neat as possible. Yeah, like so. And run along here. This second coat's going on quite well. This paint's quite thinned down. It's a nice flow to it. So multiple thin layers won't clog up. See, that's got a, getting quite a solid white there. Not perfect, so we'll do another coat after this. But um, pretty good. I'm just running right up to the edge. See, the lines are becoming nice and sharp as you do the finishing coat. It's looking good. So. That's all you're doing, very really similar to the orange, just going around. You might need to go around twice, I reckon two coats, just to get that looking really nice and bright. But uh, white's a lovely colour. Uh, very, It matches very well, I think, with the orange. They do complement each other really well. So I'm going to carry on here uh, and just pick out all the areas I've done in white. Except these little missiles, we'll do those last. Uh, I'm going to pick those out in white. Uh, and then you can see how it comes out. Right, so you can see I've finished the white here now, I've just gone round, nice and solid here, just building up the layers, thin layers are better 
uh, than doing sort of heavy coats. And that's why I, that's how I keep uh, the the finish here nice and smooth. Uh, this is going to light it up a lot more when we get this grey done. That's the next colour. Uh, and then here, yeah, just leaving the tips of the missiles, as I said earlier on, but the white around here is done ni again nice and smooth. Uh, helmet's done. I've changed my mind a little bit. I'm going to add some white at the very top here. So I've put painted that round uh, in white just there and then uh, picking out the detail here as well. And then for the white there's nothing uh, on this lower torso. So uh, that's that finished. What I'll do next is the grey. It's going to take longer. Uh, there's more of that to do. It's more of the dominant colour. Um, but uh, we'll get that done. Same process again, just thinner layers, building it up. There's quite a lot of work to do on this bit. Uh, and then uh, that will uh, we'll get that done. That's a nice even coat of that. And then once you've reached that stage, really, you're, you're doing well. Um, and you're heading towards getting the model uh, finished. So I really have enjoyed painting this uh, one here. Just apply each stage um, on as we've done in the smaller scale. Uh, you see in the, the smaller scale painted tutorial of the, the tower. Uh, uh, broadside that we painted there and then just exactly the same process same technique just on a bigger scale um, but one, you know, once you've painted smaller stuff and you've got used to that process you then just apply it and it makes painting something you know this kind of size not as intimidating but we'll do grey next we'll bring out the colour on that and again nice and neat and then uh, we'll, we'll get that done right so again same process got a standard brush here or base coat brush um, and then say this panel just here nice and neat great thing about tower panels is you know they're, they're sculpted on so you're able to run the brush just up to the edge like so and that really helps aid you were keeping things nice and neat and then just making sure these edges are done and that's really helped recover the color you can see the difference uh, here between the one that's been washed and the one that hasn't. It's not quite right, but I reckon one more coat after that once that's dry uh, and that'll look fine. So I'm going to do around here now, nice and neat. Again, I'm just dragging the brush along. Because they've sculpted it on nicely, it, it helps just to uh, keep things nice and neat there. Work along, say paint this area for example, and you can go back and do a second coat. The paint does dry pretty good. It's actually dried here. Um, so I can do my second coat on here. Just to show you how strong the grey comes out when you do the two coats. Like so. So that's what you're aiming for. Uh, nice and bright and that lifts. It will lift the whole model. It will make quite a big difference. But what I'm going to do is just going to carry on here. Same process paint all these grey panels. If I change my mind, I want to add in some extra ones, I'll just paint those now. Uh, once, you, 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 once you see all these colours and you're able to stand back, you can think, well, I'll add a bit of colour here and there just to balance it out. Um, but as I said, it's entirely up to you. But what I'll do now is carry on with the grey on the rest of the model and get that done. Right, so the grey's done here, and you can see the, the big difference that's made. It's brightened up the whole model. And sort of really happy with how this is coming out now. Um, so a lot of emphasis here, a lot of grey around the central part, along the shoulders and so on, um, these weapon systems. And then just not so much on the sides and the back, you know, sort of a less important part of the model. And again, what it does, it just saves loads of time having to paint all these panels, you don't have to worry about that. You know, your main focus is there. Uh, a little bit here, just around the air bursting fragmentation projector. And then uh, the uh, legs here, uh, with some work done on them, sort of the grey coming through there looking good. And then uh, just on the main gun as well. Two coats is taken just to bring that up to full uh, strength again, to make it nice and even. And that's that finish. So when you start getting to this stage, you, know, you really are sort of making really good progress um, with the Storm Surge or whatever uh, tower model you're painting. So I think the next colour we'll do is uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of blue ink, uh, Dragon Hoff Night Shade, uh, onto the head of this uh, pilot here, just to wash over that. I'll do that. Uh, there's no need to show you that on camera. Um, but then the next thing that we'll do uh, will be this bronze. 
this bronze sort of colour, it needs a final highlight now, so it's the base coat's gone on, the wash has gone, it's all nicely shaded, and then we'll mix up and do a final highlight on that. Right, so onto this uh, bronze then, just taking your original uh, hash out to copper, and then I've got the old uh, before silver here, it's called uh, Rune Fang Steel now, um, is the new name for it. So just mix it up on the palette here, hash out copper, and then maybe one quarter of the room thing still maybe a third perhaps I'm just mixing up a brighter version of the original colour I'm adding water to it so that it flows nicely not too thin down because you want it to go on quite strong and then it's kind of a silvery version you'll see the colour when I put it onto the, the model here so I'm going to show you this panel here yeah that's about the colour that I want it's a lighter version uh, of that bronze, and you can see it going on. Your shading's all done for you, it's just a case of being neat and going around, like so, up to that line, and then ignoring the, uh, the, the crevice there, that's where your shading is, so we leave that, and then just run the brush right up to the edge, and nice neat job. I'm using an old uh, base coat brush here, so it can carry en enough of the paint, uh, but still neat enough to be able to give it a nice finish so just working that around yeah and that's coming out good now you might, might not be able to see it from there but it's a little bit ghosty with the colour so when that dries I will give it a second coat especially on a large, you might need to do it on smaller bits like this but on a larger panel make it nice and solid be a good idea to give it another coat and then uh, I'm just picking out other details here for the final time those dots there these bits then just going around around them like so like that it's good and then just working on these here so you've got something like this round bit here just drag the brush along nice and quick to finish that off and then you can see how much brighter that is, it's probably dry now yeah, it's pretty quick to dry so I'll now just give that a quick second coat just to make that nice and solid but it brightens up again it's another colour once the highlight goes on it brightens the whole model up another stage and that's uh, I'm happy with how that's coming out that's looking good so wherever else I've been over with the uh, the copper already I'm just going to do that highlight all the way around the rest of the model I'll get that done and you can see uh, how that comes out right so uh, I've done the highlighting here on the copper just gone around the whole model uh, where it is you can see it's really brightened up that copper there and it's sort of pushing this grey more into the background which is what you want and the main feature is this copper colour and then not too much of it you see if you just do a small amount it seems to work just fine um, so that's that on there and then uh, you've seen how it's come out on the gun that's what we were painting just earlier on and then here just all highlighted and again just brightens the whole thing up and then I've done it here as well on the main body also uh, and you can see it brightening up uh, at the back just there uh, so that's that done I also just put a wash uh, of the uh, Drakenoff nightshade just on the skin there for him uh, on his head I think what we'll do now is we'll zoom in and then we'll, we'll bring that colour up uh, on that towel skin just there. So just zooming in here so you can see I've mixed up uh, a tiny drop of the Outdorf Guard Blue uh, or the old Ultramoons Blue uh, and then mostly uh, the Ceramite White. I've just mixed it up here. You'll see the colour as it goes on. Uh, and I'm just going over the head. It's sort of a very... It's a bluish white really is the colour you're looking. Uh, just that blue tinge to make it that alien towel sort of look. Um, so you can see I'm just putting the colour on. Yeah, shading's all done for me. So I'm just sort of rolling the brush over. That's his eyebrow there and cheekbone. And then just running along the top of the head. I think it's a nice feature. Deliberately put a, a um, bare-headed uh, towel pilot here to pick out that feature of the skin. Sort of going over it a second time now. And then 
just reaching in uh, down to where the nose is and then just bringing the brush up and along. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty happy with how that's come out. So um, that's the highlight there. I may just add a tiny bit more white to the mix here and just create another level up and then just run that along the top of the head around behind just to raise that level up uh, just another stage brighter you can choose your own tone uh, or you know the final highlight color that you want but I'm pretty happy with how it's come out just there so that's that uh, finished right I've zoomed in here I'm going to show you how to paint the uh, these sort of crystal bits here on your know, find them a lot of the targeting sort of systems here all throughout uh, this storm surge and also see there in the helmet there as well. I'll show you how to do one and then it's exactly the same process uh, for all of them. So you see that we've done uh, the old dwarf guard blue uh, or the old ultramarines blue I'm using here uh, and then the wash has gone over the top so it's knocked it down a shade. So what we're going to do is first of all to take the blue as it is and then just on any of the the larger uh, crystals here just want to reinforce that blue in the bottom right hand corner like so and then leaving the, the top left hand side darkened down that's where that white spots gonna go um, so again not gonna bother the smaller ones I'll do it to this one here at the bottom just gonna strengthen the blue uh, and cover about three quarters of it leaving the top left hand corner uh, just that darker color you can hardly notice the difference um, but just that slightly bit darker does help the white to stick out a bit more um, you do that all the way around I'm just going to go straight on to the next stage and that is you then take the blue and then mix it up with maybe two thirds of the ceramite white to give you a nice light shade and then you're looking to to paint uh, the bottom right hand side like so and then just to swing it around and you're sort of looking for this kind of shape here so something like that I might just run it a little bit higher up the right hand side just to wrap it around like so that's looking pretty good and then here as well so I'm looking to highlight the bottom right hand corner and to swing it around the shape like so and then a nice neat job I want to end it with a nice sharp tip like that so that kind of finish um, I may just on this bigger one alter this down a little bit just to fade it in or even mix a bit of the blue together and do sort of a halfway in between shade here just to try and because uh, this is a lot, a lot larger one you don't notice it as much on the smaller ones but try and do a halfway in between sort of shade like so um, just grab a bit more of this blue I'll show you what I mean just do sort of a halfway in between colour like that and then just blend it a little bit wash the brush out I'm just being fussy here but that sort of gives that more of a blended sort of look and then back and add some more white in to get a stronger colour and just to reinforce that bottom right hand corner like so just to make that a bit stronger something like that so you've got the highlight but you're sort of fading out as I said for the smaller ones for example um, these smaller ones here not going to worry about all of that just a touch of the highlight colour in there bottom right hand corner and then bottom right hand corner again and then that's it, I don't need to add in any kind of uh, f shading and, and fading in with the colours I might just blend this one a little bit by adding a sort of a medium colour into the middle there then once that's done I then take the white here, I'm using a standard brush with a nice tip and then for the, the rule is that I follow for the little ones like this one here I just do a, just a tip of white in the top left hand corner like so, and you see that's got like a sort of a crystal look to it now, glistening sort of glass look. And then any medium or large ones, I usually do a bigger dot and then a small dot. 
like that. Now I'll do the same here. Uh, a bigger dot. And then I'll just touch in a smaller dot. Like so. And then you can see it gives you a glistening effect and it really lifts out, it really draws the eye um, and that's why I've, I've done these in blue, just nice opposite colour to the grey, the white and the orange, got this nice this blue colour here and taking full advantage of that, make, really brightening up this whole uh, part of the miniature here, so you can see it was quite dull before with the blue but now with those highlights and those dots, and it hasn't taken me too long, it's about a minute to do that and there's not much of this blue around on the model, so you can go around and it just really, um, really does help to pick out areas of interest uh, here on the model and it's quite an easy and straightforward thing to do. So I'm going to go around the rest of the model here and do that, it won't take you too long um, and then uh, I'll show you where I've been getting that blue done. Okay so that's that done. Uh, you can see I've done this one here, Just the uh, it's the same process for the crystals here and then inside the helmets as well there and on top here, right at the front here uh, there's two here, one either side, and the sighting equipment just there. And then coming around, there's nothing really on the back. Um, for these here, I do, uh, the rule is the, the lighter blue on the top right hand side, and then the left, the dot of white, and then when I flip it over, uh, the highlight again on the right, and then uh, the dot just goes on the left. Um, for those just there and then I'll show you the inside of the cockpit here I've been working on you can see it, just the control panels there uh, you can see the same process again and for the square panels, you can focus in there uh, so if it's square just follow the shape round uh, highlight going down along like that on the right and then I've done it because it's quite big two dots, one big, one little one and that's just how I've done the square panels uh, just there um, and it's worth doing those, the screens look quite cool they're looking at their computers and targeting uh, systems uh, it's just that and then there's nothing there for the base there's no blue to do for that uh, air bursting fragmentation projector same process just like that and then uh, there for the sighting equipment uh, on the main gun uh, the biggest circle there I just did two dots because uh, it's a little bit bigger and that just adds that interest to that sighting equipment there, so that's that done right, so I'm just I'm just working on the uh, the missiles now I think now's the time to get those painted in so you can see I've done most of them, there's a few left uh, just the way I do it instead of painting each one around uh, I just tilt at an angle and then I paint uh, the same spot so all the way along I paint the right hand side so there's a few left to do here uh, just here, so I'm going to paint the right hand side there the right hand side on that one and that one like so, and that's that finished and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt the, the miniature over here, just to come at it from another angle I'm going to come up from underneath this time and I just use, I've got a, st a standard brush here and then just painting, so I'm not worried about covering the whole uh, of the missile, just the f the third that's facing me making sure that's neat and then just rotating it around uh, to catch the next angle and usually it's you have to do this three times, so I've done one third of it, I'm going to do the next bit just means you can hold the model in the same position, not having to keep moving around to do each individual missile, you can just move the brush along from one missile to the next and that's quicker I believe, so just tucking that in there it means you're not just painting the tips of the missiles, you're actually getting the, the whole of them and it's even as well, I'm just painting the same spot for each one so you can see the the white beginning to show through it neatens the whole thing up and again it's going to brighten up the miniature and then also you're also putting on display the firepower that you have and that's sort of quite a psychological thing for Tau is to actually 
in a way boast of all the missiles and guns that your army has available. I think it's quite intimidating for Tau. That's that lower third done. Um, so all I need to paint now is this uh, this last third here, and it'll just give me a nice finish there uh, for these missiles. So like so. And just this last bit finishes this uh, cluster of missiles off. So I'm just going to run that along, go down the sides of all those and just continue painting the others. Same process uh, there for the smart missile systems as well. I can paint one of them here. So I'll paint, uh, so you can see, I'll paint one third like so, make sure it's right. And then I'll do them all and then rotate it around to the next side and then work along like that way. And when you do it that way, it's, I think it's quicker and then you get a nice, uh, you make sure you, you, you're covering uh, not just the front of the missile, the tip, but also the side parts as well, which is important to get right. Right, so I've done the missiles here. It really brightens it up. Just looking forward to getting them done. Just sort of boasting about all the different shots you got that can come through here. The missile arrays here. You've got the uh, smart missile systems. And then don't forget the destroyer. Uh, well, potentially they can be destroyer missiles here um, for the tower. And what I've done... Uh, for the storm surges, because these missiles are so important, you know, potentially they can become strength D. Uh, don't usually paint tips uh, on the missiles, but for these I have. I've done them in orange, uh, and it just draws your eye to them, just letting the opponent know and helping you to remember uh, that you're carrying some nasty, uh, or some missiles that can have a nasty impact there as well. But that's all of that done. See a nice little colour now uh, on this storm surge. So, what we'll do next is the weathering effect. So uh, I want these towers to look sort of battle hard and like they've been through campaigns. Um, so if I bring up one of the broadsides here, see the colours are there, but they've got these washes on them and sort of rust marks and so on. So I want to create that effect uh, on the storm surge here. So that's the uh, effect that we're going to go for next. Right, so I've got this Seraphim Sepia here. It's the colour I'm going to use to do the washes. Uh, so you're making to look at grubby and battle-worn uh, sort of look. The trick is not to do too little, it hardly has any effect. Don't want to do too much so that you start to dominate the colours that you've done. So it's just common sense really where you think it would be grubby and dirty. So for example, uh, on the white here, I'm just going to run it around the join between the orange and the white. Not too much, but just sort of staggering it in there. And then I think maybe it would as the rain and so on, the grime washes down. I think it would run down sort of in this direction, like so. Like that. It's not too strong, but it's just a bit of weathering to create that effect. I'm going to run a bit more down here as well. Not all the way along but some, you can see it there. It sort of breaks up the strong lines that are created by these colours. So I'll just, just brush strokes down. Then I'm going to do random patches of this wash as well. And then if I think there's too much I'll use my finger just to remove a little bit. Like so. It's all about sort of fading it in some areas I'm going to leave that pure white colour don't want them to be affected then the join here between the grey and the white I'm just going to fill that in like so again using my finger I don't want too much strength to that brown but you can see there it's sort of changed the tone here on the white it's broken up that strength of the colour. Now you can do as much or as little of this as you want. Just going around the tower symbol here, just in between the cracks, and then around the actual design as well. And then that's about all I want to do to that. I want to keep it predominantly white. Then underneath, and then run some lines down, you know, where the waters were washed down, the rust has started to wash out. And then continuing that wash all the way down going through colours, through the orange, through the white, into the grey. I might do that a bit here as well, all the way down. 
through both colours and then it can reach uh, the orange panel just here. Yeah, it's a good effect this. And then just a little bit of filling it in between the cracks here as well. So that's the process. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what I've done. So that's the sort of effect you're going for. See the, the lines coming down uh, and then also sort of in between the cracks just that rusty kind of look and you're just creating uh, that battle season. Now it's not destroyed the white here uh, but it's helped, it will help to unite all of the colours together also. It just takes off some of the sharpness uh, of the colours that you've put on. And as I said you do as much or as little as you want. Um, you can go over it again if you want to strengthen uh, the weathering that you've done and if you want to make it stronger in some areas you can use a little bit of the uh, Agrax Earth Shade and that'll give you a slightly stronger finish but I'm quite happy with how this has gone here so it's just a case uh, of continuing that on to the rest of the miniature uh, and you'll find that it just not too much not too little it's just about getting it right things like the missiles here uh, you can run the brush sort of around leave the tip white run the brush sort of around some of them not all of them like so might just shade around these dots here a little bit and then just sort of here this is quite quick just run around with the brush randomly uh, dotting this wash around just here and there and it's not a uniform because it's sort of random uh, washes that are done it's a ra or random effect of weathering then it's going to be a sort of a random process you can follow so something like that see that it just introduces a bit of color a bit of makes it look a bit realistic here so I'm going to go over the rest of the miniature um, and then you'll see how I've done the effect on the rest of the model right so the uh, wash is done here you can see I've gone over it's not too intense but it's it's definitely there it's, it's probably more visible off, off camera here um, from from my point of view I can see the, the work that's been done but you, you want to keep it quite subtle you don't want to destroy the work that you've done or overpower you know the actual main colors you've chosen so it's just sort of, sort of a subtle uh, work that's done helps to unify the colors as well helps to unify the model together so that's the base with the legs and then here it's there it's subtly there uh, and then just just the same process as I showed you uh, earlier on and then uh, on the main gun as well in fact I'll zoom in on this one and you can see how, the, how it's come out on here so you see that the wash is coming down here, it's not too intense but it's there and then it's coming down off the top here, just thinking where the rain would run down, where the, where the rust, I mean take a look at some rusty uh, machinery and vehicles and that'll give you an idea as well, uh, but usually you know, the rain comes down, it washes the rust and then where that flows the rust starts to dry and then it stains and you get that kind of weathering effect, so that's what I've done here. Um, you know, it's trying to create the impression that this Tau army's been on campaign for months, years perhaps, um, and they've got um, grubby and battle damaged and grimy. Uh, I don't want them looking factory fresh, so that wash just helps to create that weathered effect. Pretty happy with how that comes out, and that will link in well then with the chipping effect which comes next. So, you know, you've got machinery that's used over and over, uh, it gets damaged by the elements, the rust and so on comes along, um, but then also it gets chipped and damaged as well. So that's the next stage is the chipping effect. Uh, we'll do that next. So I have Iron Breaker here and I've mixed some water in the pot. It's a nice flow to it, flows very well. And then I'm going to take uh, my standard brush. It's got a nice tip. I take some of the uh, Iron Breaker here and then just common sense where you think chipping would occur, often on the corners. Here, so I'm going to chip up this corner as well. And again, the, the trick here is not to do too little, not to do too much. Too much uh, will spoil this, so I'm just going to put a little bit in. Put a little bit around there. Maybe a bit around one of these circles as well. Like so. See that? It's not too much there. Not too little. And the effect will work well on the grate. You can sort of still see it coming through. And again, don't do too much. So the corners predominantly makes sense. That's the areas that will be chipped up. And I'm going to flow onto this dark grey now. So 
Uh, just going to run it around some of these vents here randomly, around the top of some, around the bottom of others, like so. Don't want it uniform in effect, but just random. And then a little bit along the top here, here and there, here and there, and down. So quite happy with how that's coming out. Maybe a little bit more just there. And then it works well on the orange. Nice colour to chip up as well. You can see it come out there on the orange, pretty good. Uh, another thing you can do is little spots and areas uh, on the actual body work that you can chip up, like so. And then another effect is like a scrape. And often I've found uh, if you do like two together looks quite good, two or three. Yeah, I'll put a scrape in there just with some dashes from the brush. And just dot those around here and there, just showing where a scrape's taken place. See the vents here, I think they'll chip up quite nicely. So again, just r random areas. And then I might just fill in a little bit here with some more chipping. And then around this one. It's not around the whole thing, but just randomly there. I think some more chipping will look good along here. Sometimes where you have a bend or a fold in a panel, run along here, see it, it runs up and then it bends around this direction. So here is where it might get bashed. It rubs up against something. So I'm just going to run some chipping sort of along there and then sort of intensify it at the corner here. Uh, it goes on this, the iron breaker here, it's dark enough that it does show up all right on the white. You can see it coming in on there. So I'm just chipping in along the white there as well. And that goes along quite well, it goes quite nicely with the weathering effect that you've done. But you, you can see that coming along pretty quick, it's not too bad. Uh, keep washing your brush out and keep the paint flowing and thin on there. You don't want it to going on too thick because you'll struggle uh, to control the paint as it goes on. But I'm going to go over the rest of the gun here and the rest of the model uh, with this chipping effect. Right, then just to mention, I'm um, just going around the chipping here. It's the same process for the diorama for the Orcs here, uh, but I'm taking some of these Evil Suns Scarlet and just intensifying uh, some of the red here. You need to do this before you do the chipping uh, on these Orc panels. So I'm just adding a little bit of that in just to strengthen it. It's not too much, just a little bit, just where I want some areas of red to show up just a little bit more. See, it's added a bit more of a red glow to there. And then you've got this uh, face here. I'm just going to put the paint over the top of that just to bring it up to the right uh, red colour. And then I'll chip around that and that'll look fine. But just do that before you do uh, the uh, chipping on the diorama also. Right, so chipping's done here. Uh, you can see the effect uh, on the air bursting fragmentation projector. Really got that metallic battle worn sort of look now. Very happy with how it's come out. I've actually uh, stacked the model up here just to see how it looks. Um, but we'll just remove the main gun, so there's all the chipping done on there. Real battle, battle worn sort of look. Um, and it's helpful with the chipping that you've got a darker grey there. It helps the chipping stand out nicely. Um, but so it looks pretty good uh, there on the white. It does come up quite well on the orange as well. Uh, but I'm really happy with how that's come. I'm just take, removing this here, because magnetised. And then you can see the full effect now of the model and then the chipping all round. Uh, even on the metallic parts, some of the metallic parts of the armour as well, like the helmet for example, shoulder pads, put a bit of chipping on there as well. Tips of the missiles all round there. And then uh, the legs, torso, and then also the chipping uh, on the uh, orcs down here as well and their armour. Um, and then the broken uh, parts as well. There's a few bits to do on this base here. We've got this orc flesh to do, the bone colour to finish off. We'll do that next. We'll get the base finished um, and then uh, we'll do some transferring as well. I'll show you how to do that uh, on this project. Right, so obviously for orcs, just following the same painting scheme that I have for orcs already uh, on both channels, uh, but I've taken the war boss green here and then added a little bit of white, a little bit of uh, the flash gets yellow to it just to give it a little bit of warmth and then got a base coat brush here and then just run over the details 
here. So the gaps in between the muscles and so on, I'll leave that. And you're just sort of picking out the, the sculpture of the, uh, the body here. So just working along with the paint, picking out the details of the muscles here and then onto the hand. along to the knuckles, so back of the hand, along the knuckles, leaving uh, the detail there in between. And I'm actually just running the brush along this way, just picking out the details there, and just going over, picking that out. But I'll go around the rest of the uh, orc skin here, just pick it out the same way. Right, so that's that done there. I've done it. Add on the orc boy here, and then the one at the back, and then I've mixed up some white, a touch of the yellow, uh, to make a stronger highlight here. And I just usually do that on the knuckles, like uh, here where he's gripping the sword. Just pick those out. I'm just using a, uh, more of a detail brush here, uh, just to place those nice and neatly, like so. And then usually around the mouth, um, so so you can see there. Just around the mouth area here, just picking out the detail around the mouth like so. That's where you want the eye drawn to, just along the lips, the chin uh, as well. I pick out like that, and then I'm just going to tilt here so I can get in and around with the brush like that. And you can see that it just picks out the detail there. Maybe the tops of the ears as well and then the actual cheekbones you can pick out with this lighter colour, just a highlight colour uh, just to pick out the uh, detail around his mouth and I'll do that on the other uh, old boy around here as well. The other area actually uh, that I do is the tip of the elbow I usually pick that out uh, with the highlight as well so here and then uh, I'll just do these knuckles and then that'll be this bit finished so knuckles around the sword you can spend ages doing loads of highlights uh, on the orc skin, but I seem to have found that just cutting it down to a few essentials is enough, and it helps, doesn't it? You've got to keep preserve that the skin colour that you have there. If you apply too many highlights, you start to make you start to make them look washed out. So I just put a few on in key areas, and uh, it seems to work just fine. But no, that's that finished. So uh, what we'll do next. Uh, for the orcs is this bone colour, there's a skull to paint here and a few other bits as well. So I think I'll show you on the teeth here. Uh, I'm taking the... <laughs> right, so I think I'll show you on the teeth here. I'm taking the shabti bone. Uh, I've got a uh, standard brush here with a nice tip. Uh, I'm just repainting the teeth and then leaving uh, the details so that they stand yeah. out. So just picking out the teeth here, making sure I go all the way around. I think the mouth for the orcs really is a focal point uh, for them more so than the eyes which are very sunken in and small so the mouth is worth working on to make that stand out nicely here so just going to pick out all the teeth like this and then down here as well you can see them start to stand out a lot more on him and I'm just going to tilt him up so I can Get around at this angle and then you sort of go half and half uh, so your shabti bone uh, and then your white sort of mix it half and half in strength so you've got a cr sort of a creamy white color and then uh, once it's dry I then pick out the tips of the teeth uh, with that color so just right at the very tips of his teeth uh, get a coat of that as well and that just lifts them uh, another level up as well. You've got a nice real focal point here. They're making a lot of effort on the base, but it it really does help uh, when you have a little diorama set up, especially so much space to fill out uh, on such a large base. Uh, it's just interesting to have that, and it's quite easy uh, to do. So I'll go around here and do the rest of the bone. It's the same process there um, for this skull that you can see just here. Exactly the same, go over the ash empty bone, then highlight like round the eye sockets and teeth with the lighter version there. Just to point out, I've uh, dabbed on a little bit of white paint here uh, onto this banner, just a little bit, just to bring in some of the original colour, but you can still see it's pretty dirty. That's the chip marks still on there as well. But I'll get the rest of this bone done next. 
for this base. Right, so that's that done. Uh, you can see the horns there on the side of his head. I've done. Keep a look out for any fingernails. I also paint those in that cream. Uh, and then you can see the skull there uh, picked and picked out and highlighted just there. And then we've seen uh, the mouth there also for him uh, on the uh, head just here. So we're going to paint next uh, is the straps. Any straps and hangs that are on uh, his uh, body here, I just give those a coat of the bestial brown. That's the old colour or the Mournfang brown as it's now called. Uh, so the regular tunic I leave and then in straps get a coat of that just to make them a slightly different brown uh, to the rest that is used on the orc just there. Uh, there's a strap around his arm just here. Give that a quick coat. And then there's not much to this one. Very quick really. Um, the straps are around here. So just run that along like so. And just roll them over and paint up underneath and then down here there's a strap running uh, around his waist and there's that loose part of it dangling down just there okay so that's that done nice and easy right just the last bit here uh, for the base really and that's I've taken uh, some Wazdaka red mixed it with some white to make sort of a pink kind of colour I just use that to highlight the gum line uh, here along the teeth. So I just pick out, it's already red, put that in earlier. Uh, but just to just clip along the top here of these, trying to get it nice and neat. And then a bit, tiny little bit on the lower gum line, especially along the top though. Uh, that just picks out uh, the jawline there. Just another colour in there, neatens the mouth up and really helps him look like he's snarling. You can see the, his mouth so wide open and his, uh, his lips so high up, the gum line, gun line is seen. Looks very good. Uh, you'll see it there on the sculpture. It's not always the case there for the orcs. This guy's facing the wrong way to paint that. So that's that done, but you can see the eye. Let's see the, um, the gums there sticking out nicely. So really happy with this base. Uh, just looking around, doesn't look like there's anything else to do on him. Uh, and indeed the rest of the base looks like it's finished. So you have it, uh, that's the base pretty much done, uh, looking very good, just adds a real nice area of interest uh, to this uh, project. Now it'll look better I think when we get some uh, flock put on to the base, we'll do that as the very last thing, uh, and then obviously the varnish over the top. So uh, the project's looking pretty much finished now, uh, but we're going to do some transfers, there's a key to doing those well, um, so I'll show you how to do that next, I'm going to pick out some transfers here uh, for this model. Right, so for transfers, uh, I'm going to be using the old tower transfer sheets. The, the, the new models that have come out, um, they use a different transfer sheet. It's not really ones that I can use for this uh, painting style that I've gone for. So, uh, you know, tower players are going to recognise this one, but this is the one that I use. All the transfers I use come from this sheet here. And then for, trans for transfers, I'll just take a look at the project and I think where I can put my transfers on. Um, so one great example here, the space and the disc here, you can easily put uh, the Tau Sept symbol uh, just there. So I can take uh, this one, I think that will fit in there just nicely. Uh, and just to sort of get an idea from other models, it's one of the Crisis battle suits. Uh, I put some, I use some of the Tau writing, it's uh, white here, it's been put onto the grey uh, design, but I sort of think, well maybe they put writing just putting descriptions about the weaponry or some kind of uh, labelling that they would use. So I'll put some along here as well. Um, not too much, just some. And then again here on this broad side, sort of a label here on this weapon and then something written on his shoulder, some kind of designation uh, perhaps there as well. But other than that it's, it's not too extreme, just a few bits. Obviously there's going to be more to do on this bigger project, uh, but it's sort of dispersed. I don't want it to become a distraction, just to complement uh, the colour scheme that's already gone on. But it adds detail in there that's easily done because it's transfer, you're not having to paint it. So it's an easy way of adding some fine detail on to your project. And you're sort of helping to make them look more Tau by having some Tau designs and uh, writing and so on. Uh, so 
we'll put I'll show you how to do one transfer uh, and then you're free to choose you can put them wherever you want as, as much or as little as you wish but we'll do one transfer here as an example right so I've picked out some transfers I want to use I've got a cutting mat underneath and then a sharp knife just to pick them out and then I simply just dip them in my uh, water water's a bit murky here from paint but it doesn't really matter as long as it's not too strong uh, I've got my old palette here and then once that transfer is soaked I just place it on there uh, and leave it to soak through there's two transfers on there I'm going to take uh, they're both the same design and I reckon I'm going to put them again talking about late use them the tower writing is to label weapons so I reckon here's a nice spot for a transfer to go and then I can put it here and then I can mirror it on uh, the other side as well so imagine like the tower describing like venting system and it's labeled there or some, something like that um, that's the kind of idea behind it so we're just letting that soak through now the key to transfers I found is getting them to stick on they will stick by themselves and you're going to put the varnish over the top but I found that sometimes when you use just water you get like a ghosty haze behind them uh, which is very can be very annoying so what I found to fix that is just take some PVA glue uh, put a dob of it here uh, onto your palette and then when you put your water on to here, uh, you just use some PVA with it. So you mix in some PVA to see if these transfers are ready to move. Here they are. So we'll do an example here. So I'm going to put some paint on my brush. I also want to get uh, some tissue on standby, ready to dab the excess away. So uh, I'm going to take some water and then some PVA glue and then just put that on the area that I want the transfer to go like this it's watery PVA glue really uh, I then use a brush here just use an old base coat brush to lift the transfer like so it's a bit fiddly so it's worth being patient here and then making sure I've got the transfer the right way up keep track of that and then I think that looks pretty good uh, just there so when you're uh, happy with how it's come out then take your, uh, your tissue and then don't come in at an angle you've got to sort of go straight on top and then just dab it in position make sure it's flat that looks good and then when that dries that the, the haze of the glue there will disappear it will dry perfectly see-through it will help the transfer stick on because it's actually a glue uh, and then also that haziness that you usually get behind uh, that will be taken away uh, when the glue dries. I just found that's a really good way of putting transfers on. Be careful not to disturb them, uh, let them dry and then obviously a varnish coat over the top will really help to seal them in. I've never had trouble with transfers coming off um, so it seems to work pretty good but I'll do some other transfers here on the rest of the model. Right, so just working on the other transfers at the moment. I'll just cover this bit here now just to finish them off. I take some serif from sepia uh, and then I usually just drop a little bit of that over the design, not too much, but a little bit. There's a bit of a brown haze on there now, just in random areas. And then also, I usually uh, add in some chipping effect as well. Again, not too much, but enough. Uh, to blend that transfer in. You haven't just stuck the transfer on, it's become part of the model when you add the same weathering and chipping technique over the top. So remember to do that for all of the uh, transfers as well. Um, and then once that's finished, really you're ready to varnish and finish the model. Uh, so I'll get the rest of the transfers finished here. Right, so uh, transfer uh, is done here. I'll just show you where I've put some of the transfers. Uh, just one along the back here, just some of the towel uh, writing. Uh, just there and then also on the side of the uh, missiles on both sides uh, just there uh, one of the long writing tail writing bits I, I had it just at the back here you had some transfers around the back the dark gray is a good background for it and then I've, it bent just nicely in the middle there and then has gone over that angle just there on the backs of the smart missile systems there and then mirrored it just on the other side there, see not too much but it's there um, to see. Uh, then the main gun as we saw earlier here and then mirrored 
on the other side and then there was a space here I added some more tail writing just there didn't put any on this one and then for the base uh, usually I do some of the tail uh, chevron sort of markings here because it's so big I've done them top and bottom I did cut the transfer here to continue the gap running in between and put a bit of ink in there as well and then because again because it's sank so big I've added uh, some just onto the leg uh, just there as well you can see it goes nicely uh, with the dark grey in the background so that's the uh, transferring done again it's not over the top it's there uh, it's a nice feature but it, uh, hopefully it doesn't distract away from the overall um, outcome of the model so we're pretty much finished now I'm just going to add on some PVA to the base and then we'll sprinkle uh, with some flock right so the flock that I'm using for the basing uh, you can use a regular Games Workshop flock, it's no problem, whatever colour you want. I use a, a flock called uh, Verdant Green, it's a very fine grain um, grass, I just use it for all my miniatures. But it's called Verdant Green, it's by a company called TSS, Total System Scenic, you can look them up on Google. That's Total System Scenic. And then they do packs of this Verdant Green flock, there's about one pack in there, it just lasts for ages, so and it's not too expensive to get a hold of. So take my base. Just be careful with the transfers, make sure they're dry, you don't want the flock um, sticking onto them, so just be wary of that, but we shouldn't come near them here with the base work being uh, quite far away from the transfers there. Just taking an old uh, brush here, just one of my old brushes, one you'd usually throw away, but it's, it's handy for this kind of stuff. Take a PVA glue, and then there's no rule really, but again you put as much or as little on as you want. There's some red paint that's splattered onto the base here, so I'm deliberately going to cover that up. It's an easy way just to cover up mistakes. I'm going to work a little bit of the flock into the base here, some around the front. I'm quite rough with the with the brush, just scrabbing it along. I want it to look nice and random, which is really how it should be, um, for this scatter to go on there. I'm going to work around as far as here and then stop. I'm actually going to um, do half a base at a time. I'm going to work some into the gap just there. And then around to here. And I'm going to put some just around the feet, just here. I might leave a gap there. Um, again, don't want it to look too uniform. Uh, but that's looking pretty, pretty good. I may just put a little bit of flock right in between the legs, just there. Okay. So and then, uh, quite quickly, I'm going to have to take the flock out of the top here, and then just drop it onto the base of uh, the areas where the flock is. Sure that all goes on. Cover all of that area. And then just uh, putting the flock on here, just making sure I cover all of the uh, areas where the glue has gone on. And I'm just giving the base a tap, just trying to get that flock to settle onto that glue. And then I'm going to turn uh, the base here and then just tap off the spare flock here, like so. Like that, and you can see it onto the base there. I'm going to turn the model around, we'll get the other side done. Right, then with the flock uh, bashed off there, and then blow the spare away. Just blow the rest of the model, make sure it's off the actual model as well, maybe we've got to put varnish over the top. And then just with my thumb, my fingers, just run around the base to take the spare flock away from there as well, just in preparation for uh, the varnishing that we're going to do. Um, just make sure that's all the way because if you spray on top, you know, it's gonna like the, the spare flock that's stuck on here will stay on. So, just taking that all the way there, that looks good. There's the base, see, it's added a nice dimension now uh, to the model, it complements the orc sort of diorama that we've put there. So, really happy with how that's come out. Uh, we'll seal this in now with varnish, it will seal the flock, it will seal the transfers, it will seal the paint and the washes and so on. So uh, we'll give that a coat of varnish next to finish it off. Uh, the varnish that I'm going to use is uh, Purity Seal uh, by Games Workshop. I found it's the best uh, spray varnish to use. Uh, it just gives you a sort of a nice satin sort of finish. It's not a strong matte, and it's not glossy, it's sort of in between. It's just nice uh, for emphasizing color. Um, so the, the key with this one is it's a nice fine spray, a nice strong spray that comes out. So the key is not to do too much. If you do too much, it can go a bit misty. Um, so what you need to do is just spray sort of a, about sort of I don't know this kind of distance away from the model, and it's 
it's short bursts and you think you're not really coating it but you are and it's better to do a, a one coat that's light it may be even a second than rather just spraying over the top and you can vis visibly see that it's coated because it, it can, really can especially metallics uh, it really can mess the colors up so a very light coat of this uh, will give you a nice finish uh, to the model but I'll go ahead and get that sprayed up and then we'll stand back and take a look at the finished model all right, so there it is. The Storm Surge, barely get it on camera here. It's a beautiful model, really happy with how it's come out. Um, so air bursting fragmentation projector I've stuck on. I may well magnetize that, uh, it may be an easier join to do. Um, I've just sort of rotate it around this weight to show you just there. Uh, but magnetizing working, magnetizing is working great here on the rest of the model. See all the missiles nicely picked out in the white they do sort of stand out here, that's what you want, the emphasis on the weapon systems and then the tips here add on the uh, strength D potentially, missiles there um, then remember we said with the colour scheme, the emphasis here in the centre of the body your eye being drawn in uh, towards this part here and then also the weapon systems as well and then the main gun which I can fix now into uh, this position straight down just with the pins and magnet like so, so that's when he's got anchors down, ready to fire the targets. And then it's a little bit of a tight one at the moment because all the varnish and so on, but that'll ease up. And then I can go at this angle here uh, for uh, the anchors up position, so it's maneuverable like that. I do like both poses, so I'm glad I've got that option there for him. So there he is. And if you follow along in the tutorial, uh, then you can reach uh, the same results. Really happy with how he's come out. He's a beautiful focal point now for the Tau army. Um, and then we've got the bonus here of this base, uh, this diorama of orcs here, uh, just to add some area of interest uh, to the model. But there he is. Probably one of the biggest models I've painted so far, uh, for regular games of 40k anyway. Uh, but there he is. Uh, so. From start to finish there, remember the three stages that we've done, base colours, washes and then final details uh, and then that is how you can reach uh, to get your towel up to this standard. So there it is, that's the in-depth painting tutorial for a KV-128 Storm Surge. So thanks for watching, keep a look out for him uh, in future games, thanks for watching and tune in next time.